Nobody tell Joe Bastianich, but today we're combining fish and cheese. But it's okay. The Galloping Gourmet said it's fine. Middle shelf, 28th book from the left, page 52. The Graham Care Cookbook by the Galloping Gourmet. Cod, capers, and egg sauce. Today we're cooking from the Graham Care Cookbook by the Galloping Gourmet. Recipes from his cooking show, also the Galloping Gourmet, from the late 60s and early 70s. I like this book. I like the Galloping Gourmet. I like the, the show. I think if, if somebody today were to see it for the first time, uh, they might assume that it's a character from an Austin Powers movie, maybe? Definitely from an era. His humor was alcohol uh, heavy, uh, lots of innuendo. A Scottish fellow who got his start in New Zealand and then Australia, and the show was filmed in Canada. He brought uh, all of that British kind of sensibility with him, infused his show with that. It was as much about entertaining as it was about cooking. The cookbook itself, I really like. It's laid out in a way that's maybe a little unusual today, uh, but makes a whole lot of sense, and I like it a lot. It has the ingredients near the top, and then what we're going to do to prepare those ingredients, what like the chopping and the shredding and so forth, and then how we're going to prepare them, and then some pros down below that kind of give step-by-step -step about what we're going to do. Uh, today is cod, capers, and egg sauce, a very much a recipe uh, from that era. We're gonna poach the fish in broth and milk. Uh, we're gonna prepare a white sauce, making a roux, and then adding in that poaching liquid so it's a nice thick sauce. We're gonna stir in some hard-boiled egg and some capers, sprinkle some cheese over the top, put it under the broiler so it's nice and browned, and then serve that uh, with just some sauteed vegetables. Sounds actually pretty tasty, and I'm looking forward to it. So let's give it a go. There's not a lot that we need to do to prep for this recipe. Chop up some parsley, grate up some cheese. The fish is uh, just some previously frozen fish. The recipe itself is cod, capers, and egg sauce, um, but the store didn't have cod, so I got haddock, which Google tells me is an acceptable substitute in recipes like this. All right, we need 5 eighths of a cup of broth. So I'm just using a box of fish broth. And then the same amount of milk. Need to chop just a little bit of parsley. I'm gonna grate the cheese, a uh, half a cup, and I just have this Gouda. It says a dry aged cheese, and this looks like it fits the bill. Prep work is done. Let's poach the fish, boil the eggs, and saute some vegetables. Now I'm gonna go ahead and poach in the skillet. And he says to butter the dish before we poach, which is unusual to me, but I'll go ahead and do that. So we're going to poach the fish in the mix of stock and milk, 50-50, and it says eight minutes. So it doesn't really say specifically how to do that, but I believe we need to bring the liquids up to just a bare simmer. And once they're hot, put the fish in and start the timer then. Let them be in there for about eight minutes. We don't want it to boil. We don't want it to get too hot. Just sort of a light simmer for the eight minutes. The egg waters come to a boil. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put the eggs in. And he says to have them in there for six minutes. The poaching liquids come up to a simmer, um, so I'm going to put the fish in and turn the heat down just a little bit and put the lid on. Okay. Lids on, I will set a timer for eight minutes for that. While the fish is poaching, we can go ahead and start the roux that's going to be the base for our sauce. Uh, over here, I've got uh, some butter and we'll melt that and once it's melted then I'll stir in the flour and get that cooked and then it can sit there until the fish is done and we'll put the poaching liquid from here into this to thicken up and be our sauce. Eggs are done so I 
crack them and have them sitting in cold water and they can just sit there until we need them. Poaching liquid might be getting a little bit too hot, so I just reduce the heat a little bit. We don't really want it to boil and it's kind of bubbling away a little, a little heavy there. I've got five tablespoons of flour, I'll add it to the butter and stir it all up with a spoon. And we'll just let this sit and cook for a few minutes. Uh, the fish has about three minutes to go, then we'll take this liquid and pour it into here and it'll get nice and thick. Fish is done. With the fish done, we will drain off that poaching liquid into our flour and butter mixture and stir that up so it gets thick and the fish can just sit for a little bit. Uh, let's see if I can do this gracefully. I, I did the liquid just a little bit uh, to get it started, trying to avoid having a lumpy sauce. Okay, that's all absorbed. I'm going to switch to a whisk. We'll stir in the eggs and the capers and anything else? Nope, just the eggs and the capers. So we'll stir those in. i got to chop the eggs still and uh, put the fish and the sauce into a baking dish, sprinkle with cheese, put it under the broiler. The eggs peeled nice and easy. Eggs had a nice gummy uh, texture like a, a gelatinous yolk on the inside, uh, which is exactly what he wanted. It's messy uh, on the cutting board and in my hand here, um, but you can see it's, it's not liquid, it's not runny, uh, but it's not quite solid either. That's just right. We need about a tablespoon of capers. And there's our sauce. Got this baking dish and we'll just put the fish in, put the sauce over the top, sprinkle with cheese, and into the oven. So that's gonna go in the broiler just for a minute or two until it's all bubbly, a little bit browned. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to saute some vegetables to be the side. So for the side veggies, I'm just gonna do a little combination saute steam. Got a bit of olive oil and some of the fish stock in here. I added some garlic paste. We'll put in the vegetables, put the lid on, and then just let them go until they're tender. I just pulled the fish out of the oven. The top is starting to brown. That's all bubbly. The vegetables are done. The last step is to dust the fish with paprika and the chopped parsley. Looks like a good dusting. And parsley. And there we go, dinner's ready. So I'm gonna eat most of this off camera as an actual dinner, but I wanted to give it a little taste before I did so I can tell you how it is. The fish is cook through nicely, it flakes uh, easily. I just have a little fork here, um, just right into the serving dish. It's, it's rich, there's no getting around that. Um, we didn't use cream or really very much butter at all, just enough to, to uh, coat the bottom of the skillet before we sauteed. Um, but the broth and the, um, oh, I guess there was also the butter that we used to make the roux. So we're looking at maybe two and a half tablespoons of butter for everything. Uh, but it's still, it's a very, um, just a, a deeply flavored sauce with a fish broth, little tang from the capers, little vinegary brine that's, that's in there. It's noticeable and kind of the, the body that the eggs give and the fish itself. Nice and clean, it's, it's a white fish, so it doesn't bring a whole lot to the table on its own. It's really good. It's kind of what I would expect of 
a recipe from the time. Not something I would, I would want to eat often, every day, for sure. Uh, but every now and again, as part of a, a throwback to the dishes of the 70s, this is this is it for sure. Yeah, I, I'd consider this a win. I'd forgotten I'd even had the book until it came up. Uh, and as soon as I counted it down on the shelf and pulled it out, I had a big smile because I have fond memories of watching the show. Um, it's uh, even if he disowns it now, uh, it's still kind of a, a joy to watch. The Galloping Gourmet. Thanks, Siri. This was great.